I wish to acknowledge the Wadawurrung and Eastern Ma original owners of the land on which these library services operate. We pay respect to the Wadawurrung and Eastern Ma elders, past, present and emerging. We acknowledge and celebrate First Nations people of this land as the custodians of learning, literacy, knowledge and story. I'm Jackie Bennett, the founder of Humans in Geelong. This is Beck Piconi, one of our team members, and our guest speaker, Kyle Jadali. Uh, this event is part of the City of Greater Geelong's Design Week 2021. And that came about because um, Geelong is a UNESCO City of Design. Uh, we're very pleased to be using this space and we thank uh, the Geelong Regional Library for being our partners in uh, presenting this event. Some housekeeping. Uh, please make sure your mobiles are turned to silent and the toilets and the exit are through the door that you entered. Thank you so much for coming tonight. It's great to be here in person and ever since I started Humans in Geelong, it was my dream to be talking here at the library to a room packed with 250 people. <laughs> but under the circumstances, 70 of the best will do. So thanks so much for coming out tonight. Humans in Geelong started about five years ago and it came to me as a crazy idea in the middle of the night. I wanted to focus on positive things and I wanted to focus on local positive things. So I thought, well, I want to find out what's happening in my community and I want to spread the, the stories about the great things that are happening, the individuals and the community groups and the, and the creatives who are all making a difference. And, and when I got started, there was just one man and his dog, and I don't even have a dog. But then my family and my friends joined in and, and helped out, and, um, and now a like-minded team are behind Humans in Geelong, and they are amazing. Could the team just raise their hands, please? Thanks, team. <laughs> So we tell two or three stories every week and we put them out across all social medias. They're, we have a website, we've got Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and we've got a YouTube channel as well. Um, the theme for Design Week is unpredictable. And what can you say? Well, that's life. And if last year didn't teach us anything, except unpredictable. So how do we cope? I found focusing on positive really helps. Life has lots of ups and downs. But focusing on the great things that are happening, on the individuals that are making a difference, all the wonderful things in our community. It's, it's really inspiring. And um, Amanda Gore runs the Joy Project, and she's in Queensland, but for our online expo last year, she sent us a video. And, and she says, you can rewire your brain for joy. And she gets up every morning and she thinks, I choose joy. And then when she starts to, th you know, if her thoughts wander throughout the day, she thinks again, I choose joy. And that's what she focuses on. And she encourages others to do that as well. The uh, educationalist, Sir Ken Robinson, who has the most watched TED talk in the world, he focuses on um, finding your element and he suggests that people find their element and what they're really passionate about. And he said, you know, you get those people in life that sort of go along and, and they get by. 
and they make do. And then you've got the others who look for what they really love and, and find their element and find their passion and they're the people that we put the stories out about. So we started almost five years ago. Uh, two or three stories a week makes over 600 stories. We've held three live expos at Deacon Waterfront and we really hope we can hold another live one this year. We, last year, it took six months to get my head round it, but with the encouragement of the team saying, come on, we can do this, we're going to do an online expo. We've got to keep the momentum going and, and that's what people need at the moment. They need a bit of hope and inspiration. So we went to the people we've done stories on over the last five years and we said, well, who would like to be part of an online expo? And we ended up with over 120 diverse videos. And you can have a look at them any time on the Humans in Geelong YouTube channel. They're a great resource and, and we're very proud of them. Humans in Geelong has a following of um, people from 45 different countries. So we took Geelong to the world with the online expo. <laughs> and we've produced our book. That was a state government grant called Pick My Project. We had to spruik for votes. That was a bit of fun, wasn't it, Ange? We're down at the local shops, oh, vote for us, vote for us. <laughs> so we can produce a book. Uh, we put in 40 stories, 40 quotes, and, and that book's still available. And we've got it here tonight if anyone would like a copy. And we've got our bags as well, and we're just asking for a small donation and helps cover the insurance. And this is what a live expo looks like. So with the expos, we ask the people that we've done the stories on to be part of it. And um, we have over 50 exhibitors, 12 guest speakers, and 12 culturally diverse performances. Now I'm going to hand over to Beck Picconi to talk about um, what she does in her story. I met Beck because I was teaching her daughter, Ruby, in, in prep in 2016. And one of the other families at school knew what I was doing and they said, oh, you've got to do a story about Beck. So I, I asked her if she was happy to share her story with, uh, throughout Humans in Geelong. 
And, um, and then she joined the team and together we've been mentoring each other since then. Thanks, Beck. Thanks, Jackie. So, yes, my name is Beck Bacconi. Um, I'm a very proud team member of Humans in Geelong. Um, I'm also the founder and CEO of a brain cancer charity called Peace of Mind Foundation. So, um, this charity was uh, set up back in 2013. Um, unfortunately, uh, brain cancer personally impacted my family and that's why I started it. But it's all about supporting people here and now living with that disease. And so, we're based in Geelong, but our services are all across Australia. So, as a mission, we're just about giving support, courage and community to patients, families and loved ones. And our vision is that every family in Australia will receive the support that they need. We have um, lots of exciting projects that we've been doing. Um, and uh, I think COVID, um, if anyone's involved in, you know, I guess not just in not-for-profit, but in any kind of business, um, it had major impacts. And so for us, certainly as a charity, it had a huge impact for us. Um, we had to cancel all our events and all our fundraisers. But what it did was allow us to really focus um, on what it is that we want to achieve and develop, I guess, more of a strategic plan around that. So we've actually had a lot of, um, I guess, success come out of uh, last year's experience and um, I was just going to share some of that with you tonight. So um, we received a grant from the Geelong Hospice Foundation um, to fund Australia's first brain cancer support worker. So you might see our peace of mind car driving around Geelong at the moment. They're travelling between Geelong all the way down to uh, the South Australia border, um, going in homes to um, people that have been you know, recently diagnosed or people that are in palliative care um, and delivering that face-to-face -face, um, support. So there's no other one in Australia, which is really sad, but it's something that we certainly um, are very proud to have here locally in this region. We've also uh, managed to have this survivorship diary resource. So there's not too many um, really quality brain cancer resources out there at the moment, but last year I was contacted by a patient who was uh, writing a book and she wanted to um, work out how she could get it out there to more people. And so she's created this amazing resource. It's the best that I've certainly seen in seven years in this line of work. And um, we're distributing that all across Australia in all the major hospitals um, and to all the brain tumor care coordinators. Um, that's happening in May. So we're really excited about that. We're also... Um, got a big event coming up, so the 2nd of October, having an event um, with Westfield. So we're hosting a bit like an amazing race challenge, and that's going to be inside the Westfield Shopping Centre. Uh, logistically, that's going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> the risk management plan around that's going to be really fun. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a fantastic event, and there's uh, 50 teams of four that we're going to engage uh, in that event, all to raise funds uh, for brain cancer support. And then this uh, weekend, we've got another project which uh, the Barwon Health Foundation and Bybury Trust have helped us fund. And we're bringing together patients to create legacy items. So they'll do hand casting and professional photography, recorded life stories, um, fingerprint jewellery, memory bears, all those special things that their loved ones can have um, and cherish long after um, their loved one pass away. So um, that's a really exciting event that we've got going on. And, um, yeah, keep an eye out for us. But thanks to Jackie for obviously covering a story on Peace of Mind back in the early... I think it was nearly five years ago now. Um, and I'm very proud to be part of this team. And if you are wanting to get involved in a really positive um, team environment that's a lot of fun, filled with joy, uh, lots of dancing as well, um, then definitely come and speak to us after this. We'd love to have you involved. Thank you. Thanks, Beck. Now, unpredictable. 2020, we were run off our feet. Uh, humans in Geelong had more stories than ever to cover, and it was all because individuals and groups were responding to the situation. The picture of the nurses in the nurses' caps, that's... Um, the story that Deb Elliott gave us. 
Deb uh, was, is retired. She was over in New Zealand visiting friends, had to get, call her, her holiday short, come back to um, Anglesey where she lives, she, and isolate for two weeks. Around about this time last year. Four days into her isolation, and when she's going quite crazy, because she's a very active woman, she had a call from a friend who works who, um, as part of a Rotary Club in, up in Melbourne. And her friend said, look, Deb, you're a great sewer. Any way you could organise the sewing of 500 medical caps? And the idea is to keep the medical staff's hair clean and, and a bit safer. And Deb said, oh, yes, no worries. And she rises to a challenge. She started a Facebook page called Helping Our Hospital Heroes Australia. And she put out there, who'd like to help sew nurses' caps, medical caps? And she got a team from right round Australia, and they ended up sewing 17,000 caps. And those caps have gone to hospitals right around Australia. They, they, they went into the local hospitals here, right around Australia, and even over, in, over to the UK when they heard about the caps as well. The Pen Pals project was run by both um, Gen U and Home Instead, and they were concerned about clients who might be living alone, and they... Um, organised for students to write and be pen pals for these, for these isolated people. And it brought a lot of joy to, to isolated people. Um, the International Friends Buddy Program was run by, is run by um, Study Geelong, and it's still running at the moment. Usually in Geelong we have about uh, over 4,000 international students each year. And last year we had about 2,000 and they couldn't go home if they wanted to. Uh, so Study Geelong thought it would be great to pair them up with a local for a cultural exchange. Um, I joined in the summer program and, and my buddy Surya is here tonight. Thanks for coming Surya and supporting me. Uh, Surya is from India. We've, we had some, we've had some great discussions and, and, and fantastic catch-ups. And that program's still running, and Study Geelong are always looking for um, individuals to be part of it, locals to be part of it, and to buddy up with someone. So look at the um, Study Geelong website if you're interested. I'd, I'd certainly recommend it. Bottom left-hand corner is Penny the Story Dog. And Karen Nucky got in touch at the beginning of last year, and she was the first person in Geelong in the region to do the training to um, organise story dogs to then go into schools and listen to grade two students read. And these were students that might have been struggling with reading. And Penny would sit and listen to them read, and she's non-judgmental. And the kids had success. So it's a fantastic program. It started, oh, I've done a story on it. Um, it's there, all these stories are on our website and you can check them out and, and get contacts for others. Um, but now they have 12 sets of story dogs in the Geelong region that are helping out in local schools. Part of Humans in Geelong is giving opportunity to others. We've given opportunity to team members, we've mentored people, we've written references. People who've joined us have gone on to full-time jobs uh, with our glowing references and all the experience that they get. And we also like to give opportunity to the youth. And when Kyle Jadali came to us at uh, beginning of last year and said that he was ready to tell his story and he hoped that it would help others, we were very happy to to work with him. And Kyle's here tonight from Atma, and he's going to tell us about his journey. Thanks, Kyle. Is this, all right, sweet, it's working. <laughs> Hello, everyone. That is me with pink hair and <laughs> no eyebrows, and I don't think I'd slept for about 28 hours in that photo. 
That's because I did a fundraiser with Lewis, the other kid who I started Atma with, and we ended up raising just about 5K, and we had to run eight kilometers, and we did all that, and we looked pretty crazy, and that is how I showed up to graduation, which was an interesting one. But today I want to talk a little bit about mental health. I think slowly we're starting to talk more about it, and I think a lot of people talk about stigma that we face with mental health, but I don't think people talk about the self-stigma that we put on ourselves sometimes. I know personally, throughout my time with my mental health issues in the past, I've always invalidated the way I've felt or the experiences I've had, and it's often made me feel worse. Now, I think that we all need to take a step back and really think about if we do this or not. Sometimes we get told by others, or sometimes we tell ourselves that, you know, other people have it worse, so we shouldn't feel sad. But that doesn't really help us. You know, whilst it might be true, we're using logic when we're probably more emotional creatures. So it just leaves us feeling invalidated and feeling like we can't really open up to anyone. Now, this often pushes onto others. So if we're invalidating ourselves, we invalidate others around us as well. And this is why the self-stigma and then feeds into the stigma of mental health. But we can change this. Allow yourself to feel the emotions that you feel. It's okay to feel sad sometimes. It's okay to feel happy sometimes. Just experience it, because you're not gonna stop it no matter what. You're gonna have your good moments, you're gonna have your bad moments, but it becomes a lot more bearable if you just learn to accept it, and if you learn that, you know what, it's okay. Nothing really lasts, no happy motion will last, and I think we all know that. But also, no sad motion will last either, and you'll have the moments in life like that where life is really good, and it's a lot of fun, and that's what makes it worth living. That's all I really have to say. I hope you guys have a great evening. Thanks, Carl. And as I said, um, the stories of, of Kyle and, and other slides that I've put up um, and the people in the dance, they, they can all be found on our website. If you go on the website, you can search for Kyle Jalali and, and read his moving story. Now, the dance. Um, at our expo in 2018, we wanted to do something different and we had a, a talented singer in our midst, Jack from um, Heighton, he was at Heighton Primary at the time uh, in grade five and uh, Kim Cooper, who's also a, a team member, uh, they teamed up and they sang This Is Me at our expo and we decided to hold a flash mob and surprise everyone and the aim was to showcase diversity and that was lots of fun. And then we thought, well, with the 2019 Expo coming up, what, what are we going to do next? What dance next? And Beck found this cool video clip of a man who danced with different people all over the world, and he put it to one song. And we thought, hey, we could do that and invite the people in our community that we've done the stories on, the individuals and the groups and the creatives that are making a difference to film a bit of dance, or we could film them, send it in to us and we'll put it to one song and then launch that. And it'll be a bit of fun. Um, and we had hoped to use the song I'll Make You Happy by the Divinals because Chrissy was a Geelong girl, but uh, we weren't able to get the copyright for that, which presented with a problem. And the great thing about having a problem is that then you have to find a solution. So we held a song contest and we put it out there to everyone that we knew that was involved in music. Um, we put it out on, on social media. We said, come on, musicians, come to get, make up a song for us that we could use for our dance video clip. And, and it, got, it got shared widely. And I hope a few of the musicians are here tonight. Have we got some of the songwriters here tonight for the announcement? At least one. Is Jill here? Two? Very good. We've got a couple of them here. It was, it was hard to choose the winning song, but the whole team helped. And you'll, you'll hear it in a moment when we show you the dance. So we ended up with 60 clips. And Hadil, our very talented videographer, put them all together to the one song. 
and you can find her deal at HS Stories Photography. And I hadn't mentioned that humans in Geelong are all the team members, we're all volunteers. We're doing this because it's our passion, it's our way of giving back to the community. Now, um, we've got the Orange Sky Laundry, the top left-hand corner. I managed to, I, I happened to be driving past and they were there washing the clothes of the homeless. So I said, hey guy, girls, can you, can you dance in front of the van? And I videoed them. Uh, bottom right-hand corner is Steve Beatty, one of the early stories we did. He supports people in Nepal and his foundation's called We All Rotate and he's particularly good at supporting kids through school. And he sent in a clip of him dancing with some women in their traditional dress. And we've uh, managed to, when I was traveling, I danced with a group over in Spain, uh, in Malaga, and then another a group of students on the beach in, in Bournemouth. Um, one of the uh, one of the team members said, "Oh, it's a bit like a Where's Wally of Jackie Bennett." Um, <laughs> but if you think of me as a, a, a Mr. Bean type character, that might help make it a funny funny little clip. And I've put on we've put on the seats, and there's a few spare ones down the front. A list of everyone that's included in the dance in the order that they that you can see them. And from 8:30 this evening. The dance will go live on our YouTube, on our Facebook, um, and on our website. And you'll be able to share it and watch it again. So I hope you enjoy it.
So congratulations, Andrea Robertson, for winning the song contest. And we'd also like to announce that the Red Violets came second. We had um, $200 for the second prize for the song and $500 for the first prize. So please email us in an invoice. <laughs> oh. Or no, just your bank account details. I'll transfer it over. <laughs> Um, but the, the video has, as I said, lots of individuals and creatives and groups in our community and also team members as part of it. And, and we hope that you share it widely and, and spread, spread the word. Um, we hope that you join the hug movement. And you can help by, by following us and sharing the stories because if you share the stories, the message gets out there further. I had a young girl come up to me once and, and um, she was in her 30s and she said, oh, Jackie, you taught me out at Leopold Primary School because that's my other, other job. Um, you taught me out there and, and I saw the story about Samaritan House and I went and I told my, my family at the dinner table, the extended family, and um, my brother's wife is a hairdresser and now she's cutting the hair of the people at Samaritan House. So we never will know the full extent of um, how our stories help out there. And the online expo can be viewed any time on the, on the, human, uh, the uh, Humans in Geelong YouTube channel, as can the dance now and a few other dances um, and videos as well. So I'd like to thank you all very much for coming. Uh, we're going to have question time in a moment. Uh, can I thank the City of Greater Geelong for holding Design Week 2020? We were all set to go last year and then things had to change. And this year there are 60 events available over the next couple of weeks. And if you look at the Geelong Design Week website, you can see what else is available and, and book into some other great events as well. And we'd also like to th thank the, um, the Geelong Regional Library for partnering, partnering with us and um, giving us, th us this beautiful space to use tonight. Now, does anyone have any questions uh, either about humans in Geelong or, or for Beck about peace of mind or for Kyle about Atma? Yeah, so, sweet. So Atma, we started Atma last year. I was in year 12 and I was sitting next to this kid, Lewis, and I didn't really know him. And I've been, last year I was reading a lot into Buddhism and where I was from, India, Sanskrit as well, I love Sanskrit writing. And we were, we wanted to start a mental health service and we didn't know what to call it, but I'm big into my Buddhism, so I wanted to go with something to do with that. Now, we chose Atma because it refers to the self behind the ego or your soul or your true self, who we truly are. So uh, separated from the ego. And that really related to us because personally I really struggle with having such a strong ego at times and Lewis does as well. So we decided to choose that name to kind of remind ourselves of what we want to achieve, which is being more aligned with our Atma. Thank you for asking by the way. What are you doing with that now at the moment? So it's grown way more than I ever thought it could, and same with Lewis. Um, so we're currently in a couple government task force, um, so statewide, and I don't know if you guys know the mental health reform that was out the other week. There was a big report, and they're making a bunch of recommendations. That came from meetings that we were in. So a lot of the stuff we're doing right now is behind the scenes work. So we're hoping to get a youth hub set up in Geelong. So we're working with a couple politicians on that. But it's a lot of behind the scenes work. We did a fundraiser and we're hoping to do more. And I guess it's a lot about youth that we're trying to get involved in a lot of informal work. So going to schools, talking to schools, stuff like that is currently what we're doing alongside running our social media. So our Instagram is atma.au, so that's A-T-M-A-N.au. And our fat Facebook is atmahealthau. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Thank you. <laughs> that's okay, I love doing it and Lewis does too. Oh, it definitely does. 
Um, I have a question for Kyle as well. As someone who is, is uh, you know, young and youthful and all that, um, what advice would you have for parents in the audience who may have kids who are going through tough times? That's a tough one. There's no, there's no single answer to that. I think often parents have this need to look after their kids, and which is, you know, it's an instinct, like it's instinctive. And often that means that parents often know what the right thing to do is, which is often getting out in the sun, exercising, making your bed. Simple things can help kids. And often parents, parents realize that, and they're right a lot of the time. So they try to tell their kids that, but the kids won't listen a lot of the time, and it creates this, this tension between them. I guess the thing as a parent is you have to just realize that you can tell your kids that all you want, but they have to realize it themselves. And it's really, really tough to accept that, I can imagine, as a parent, because you know what the right thing to do is, but you have to just accept that you can give them advice once in that, and you can tell them what you think is best, and then you have to let them realize it themselves. Because that's the big thing with being a kid, you know, you're naive, you're, you know, we're a bit dumb sometimes, we don't really know what's best, but we figure it out, and I think all kids do eventually. So I guess the big thing is patience and allowing them to figure that stuff out and figure their life out. Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Rhys. Oh, that's a great question. Um, when we started off, I was sitting at the staff room table and I said to, the, to my, my friends, my colleagues, oh, I want to start Humans in Geelong and I want to write stories about locals who are making a difference. And the secretary was sitting next to me and she said that her son uh, was going to represent Australia in the Frisbee Championship, which was being held in Poland. And the Addy wouldn't do a story on it. And I said, well, we will. <laughs> and that was one of our first stories. And then another colleague's son uh, is a star ballet dancer, Gabe Slaven, Slaven and he's now um, over in Europe studying ballet, and so we did a story about that. So initially it was, and, and then what, someone else said, oh, you've got to do a story on Beck, and so it was people that we knew. Uh, and then other people were getting nominated and often you'd do a story with one person and they'd nominate another four or five because they're the sort of people that know others within the community that are doing amazing things. And, and then, you know, everyone's got a story. You, I'd go out with the dog walkers and stand on the oval and have a chat while the dogs are playing and, and um, I find out about one person and another one and, and then you've got a, a handful of stories there as well. And it gets to the stage where we can't keep up uh, and we make a list and we try and get back to people and, um, and, and now a lot of people are sending stories in. Um, we had a story from the Red Violets uh, about Harmony Week and, and that fit in perfectly for being posted on, on Sunday for Harmony Day. Uh, I guess, and, and we're always looking for, for more writers to help write the stories. We could probably post more often if, um, you know, if we, if we could, because um, there's no end to the stories. Yeah. Uh, and anyone that we've done a story on or, or who was part of the dance, could you raise your hands? We've got quite a few within the room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? This feels like school again with people raising their hands. Oh, thanks. Uh, Jackie, obviously there's like individual people who say, oh, you know, it's made a really big difference, so I've ended up doing this, that kind of thing. Have you had a sense of what it's done in the Geelong community? Well, three years of live expos and we've had thousands of people attend each one. Um, and... Uh, 
we're now being invited to be part of other projects, like Barwon Health got in touch. They're running a project called the Life Transitions Project, and their aim is to get people that are over the age of 55 more active and more connected. And they, are, they knew that we were good storytellers, and they asked if we'd like to tell some stories about people that were over 55 that are, that are inspiring in that field. Um, and then they're going to become streetscapes, the big posters on the wall, and we'll put them across our social media as well and our website. Um, last year, we ran the Volunteering Ge Geelong Awards with Gen U, and um, we're also involved in other projects as well. So, and, and then, you know, the other day, we were, uh, a few of us were part of the March for Justice, and I put a video up about that. That got thousands of views and so many positive comments. And that's the beauty of it. We can do on-the-spot videos and, and post them in, um, straight away, and, and then that inspires others to become involved. Someone said to me, oh, I didn't know there was a march. Someone else said, oh, I thought I might be the only one there. But they see uh, a group response, and, and then others are, are more in, uh, likely to join in as well. Thanks. Um, my question's for Beck, uh, comment and question. Um, first of all, congratulations. Thanks. How, um, how inspiring out of adversity. Um, I was interested, it's such a huge geographical area that you cover, and I don't know whether I um, didn't quite understand, but is there only one person that's covering that? Yeah, so there's one brain cancer support worker who does the face-to-face, -face, um, but we have a supportive care team, actually Bronwyn, where's Bronwyn? There she is. So Bronwyn's our supportive care coordinator, so she will do all the um, sort of online contact with families, um, and then myself and a couple of others, so, mm. um, but in that, yeah, face-to-face, -face, um, it's just one person, and we've just applied for a second grant, hoping that to... That was my question. Yeah, yeah, hoping to get a, um, a second person, because at the moment it's funding for three days a week, and we want to get another person, so we've got the full um, five days covered. Um, but yeah, in, he only started less than two months ago, and he's already got about 20 families that have been referred, so the hospitals, yeah, refer. Um, to him, but yeah, our aim is that we will have brain cancer support workers all across Victoria. Fantastic. Um, yeah, within the next sort of two to three years, that's our aim all across Victoria, and then eventually, hopefully, you know, I guess with the McGrath Foundation and their breast care nurses, and that took off, and that started just with a, a handful. Absolutely. And, the, and then the government got involved and could see the, you know, the value in in funding that. So that's sort of our aims is that if we can get the initial funding to, I guess, prove that it's a worthwhile service. Um, then hopefully the government can get behind it and fund them nationally. Well done. Thank you. Last one. No. Well, um, yes. Thanks. You were saying how you were looking for more volunteers and you know people to join the human in Geelong movement. So how if someone was interested to do that, how would they go about that? And also, like, how much time would you think that that would take up and how often do you meet, etc.? Well, um, it's all very fluid. Uh, it's up to you and, and how much time you've got to give or a person's got to give. Um, some, some people help by writing, some take photos, some are, are ideas people. Uh, we've got a lovely Rinny at the back who's our meet and greet and she's helping with the books over there, the books that are available. Um, and, and just someone that's there with new ideas, that helps. So it's, it's a completely up to you. Mm -hmm. And um, some volunteers have been with us from the start. Others have been had to come and go depending on their other commitments. And um, we just appreciate any extra help. And you can see me after the show and I'll, I'll um, rope you in. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, even just for, you know, events that we run throughout the year, even if it, you just want to volunteer a couple of times throughout the year um, to help at an event, that's helpful as well. Yes, there's, and we, we uh, enlist, uh, you know, cast of hundreds for the expo to, to make that run. 
Well, thank you all very much again. Um, as I said, we've got the books and the bags up the back, and that's just for a donation. Um, from 8.30, the vi dance video goes live. And I just had a couple of thank yous, so I'll... <laughs> Oh, well, you all know who you are. Thank you, thank you very, very much for coming tonight. <laughs> I just want to ask real quick,